Hello, my name is AJ. I go by TechFriend on social media. I have over 10 years experience as a software engineer. I make content specifically for software engineers and how they can better position themselves in the new world of AI with these new tools. I've been testing these AI coding tools and making videos about them for over a year now. And a lot of what I said even last month is now outdated. So here's a new updated video. We're gonna go through the new models, how they compare and some quick tips on how I use my favorite tools. So previously I recommended checking out the eval plus leaderboard, which combined the human eval and MBPP benchmarks, which were pretty much the standard coding benchmarks for LLM models. This website used to have the updated average benchmarks um, pretty nicely, but they haven't been updating it. And also I found it to be unreliable. They say code Quen 7B is better than a lot of these other models, but um, I don't think that's the case. Thankfully, Ada, my favorite AI coding assistant, have made their own LLM leaderboards to show LLMs that work best with Ada at editing code. And Paul's been really good at updating this as soon as new models come out. So shout out to them. And if you want to learn a little bit more about Ada, I have a video dedicated on it. Um, but as I said, it's outdated. Previously, when I did that video, GPT-4.0 was the best model at coding, but now we have some new contesters. So let's take a look. So Ada has a few different leaderboards. They like split up code editing, code refactoring. Um, refactoring is when it takes large code files and has to refactor large amounts of code, where code editing is generally smaller amounts of code. We'll start off with the code editing leaderboard. That's at the top. I think that's more common use case. And yeah, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. This model was really unlike anything else. When it came out, I was just so amazed at how good it was at coding. This has been the king of king llm for coding for quite a while since it's come out no one's been able to come close and we can see at this leaderboard here the ada leaderboard it's able to complete 77 percent of the coding exercises for this benchmark by the way this benchmark consists of 133 small coding exercises from exorcism and yeah claude sonnet is able to do 77.4 percent of these exercises and has a correct formatting 99% of the time. So very impressive. Next up, we have Deep Sea Coder V20724. This is quite a new model. I think it was released sometime in the past week. Today is July 26, 2024, by the way. So Deep Sea Coder is almost as good as Claude, but you can see the difference is actually quite vast compared to the difference between the other models. A whole 5% difference between Claude Sonnet, which I personally feel is so much better than the other models and it kind of shows here um, it's a whole five percent better than deep sea coder but one really good thing to know about deep sea coder is it's about 20 times cheaper let's have a quick look see here deep sea coder v2 actually has 17 cents per million tokens blended price blended input and output whereas if you look at claude sonnet 3.5 it's actually six dollars so that's actually a 35 times difference in price so deep sea code of v2 is 35 times cheaper for a supposed five percent difference in performance but that in my experience that five percent actually feels a lot more it feels it it feels like it the sonnet is actually quite a lot smarter than deep sea coder and not only is Sonnet smarter, it's also a lot faster. If you look at the median tokens per second, Sonnet runs at about 78 tokens per second, where Deep Sea Coder actually only runs at about 16 tokens per second. So yeah, it's about four times slower to run um, Deep Sea Coder, unfortunately. 35 times cheaper, but four times slower. Now let's quickly go over some of the other notable mentions of these models. GPT-4.0 by OpenAI performed equally to deep sea coder but yeah gpt40 is also kind of expensive let's have a look gpt40 is actually more expensive than claude sonnet 3.5 and it's about the same speed a little bit faster than claude sonnet another worthy mention is claude opus now this is the claude 3 opus so this is like the old opus version we we still don't have 3.5 but one thing to know about claude opus is it's actually a larger model than sonnet so that makes it actually better at kind of not being lazy and considering more context potentially i'm not sure about that part um, but you can see here it actually performs the correct formatting 100% of the time. Similarly, GPT-4 is a larger model compared to 4.0 and they're 
typically better at larger code edits. And we can see that in the code refactoring leaderboard, which was down here. And you can actually see that Cla Claude Opus is actually better than Claude Sonnet on the code refactoring leaderboard. So the code refactoring leaderboard um, asks the LLM to refactor 89 large methods from large Python classes, which is a more challenging benchmark. It was kind of done to kind of provoke and measure GPT-4 Turbo's lazy coding habit. So this uh, GPT-4 Turbo kind of sometimes would leave out parts of code and, you know, put comments instead of actually writing the code and stuff like that. So it's good that we have different types of benchmarks to compare these LLMs. Um, some other worthy mentions here is Llama 3.1 405B. So this is the best open source model we have available. It's, it's able to do 66% on this leaderboard, which puts it at about, if you only count the hosts, it's fourth place. First you have Anthropic, then you have DeepSeek, then you have OpenAI, and then you have Llama at fourth place if you don't count the versions of the models. So yeah, that's pretty impressive for an open source model where we're almost able to compete with code. And for non-coding things, Llama 3.1 actually sometimes outperforms Sonnet and ChatGPT, so that's really impressive. And there's some other models here. Mr. Large is also quite new, but it's not able to compete anywhere close to the to the top performers. And we also have Gemini from Google, which is even lower on this leaderboard. Gemini 1.5 coming in at 57%. So it's like quite buried down under all these models, um, even under Llama 3.170 B. So it's actually not that good at coding. But um, one good thing about Gemini is that it's free to a certain limit on the API. And it also has a 2 million token context window. So those are two really big reasons why maybe you'd want to use Gemini if you don't want to use any money. And it's probably better than any LLM you can run on most computers. It's not, I wouldn't say Gemini is irrelevant, but it's not as good as the other options. And if you do want to run something else for free on your local machine, like something in the 7B range, let's have a look at what the best thing would be. And I think it would probably be Codestrel. I miss Strul. I think you can run Codestrel locally. Its performance is about 51%. And I think that's like a 20B model if you can run that. Um, or maybe that's different. Codestrel 22B, that's also quite high up there. And then for 7B models, uh, we have Code Quen, but that's only 34%. So when I first started my coding AI journey, I was really hoping I could run one of these models locally and code with it. But they just, they're just not, not there yet. These 7B models are just nowhere near as smart as they, as I would like them to be for everyday use with coding. And yeah, so those are the models and how they perform with Ader. And I assume they would be very similar with other um, AI coding tools. And really nicely here, you can see how to use them with Ader. Um, you can just run Ader with the model flag and choose whichever model you want. Alternatively, if you're already in Ader, you can have a look at the models by going slash models and then typing, I don't know, Gemini, and then seeing all the other hosts for Gemini and all the potential ways you can run Gemini. Um, and then if you want to load the model, you just go model Gemini slash Gemini Pro and now we've loaded Gemini Pro. Um, apparently, I don't have my Gemini API key here, but you can just set that. Um, to see how to set that, you can just go into connecting to LLMs on the Ader chat docs. Um, and it has a nice instruction for pretty much every every type of model you could want to use. Another worthy, worthy shout out I should mention is Cursor. Um, they have a free tier as well and the ability to use um, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So that's been pretty good as well. And they've just introduced the new um, composer mode, which you have to turn on in settings. And I haven't properly tested this, but this is looking to be like it can actually take on Ader. Previously with just the chat, uh, I didn't like cursor. It was too slow. But now with their composed mode, um, I think that it could take on Ader. Personally, I prefer an open source tool, so I'm still sticking with Ader. But, you know, at the, at the rate that cursor is innovating, I might make the switch to cursor. Who knows? Anyway, guys, make sure you're followed and subscribing me and stay tuned for more coding AI updates. I will make sure to keep you guys posted. And I also do live streams pretty much every week, at least once a week. So, yeah, um, see you guys in the next video. Oh yeah, and if you want to join the community, you can see all my socials at techfriend.net and also join the Discord where we have over 1,000 members um, in the community actively chatting about AI and the latest tech. Hope to see you around.